Welcome back to the vlog. We have a lot of good hands to go over today, so we're going to jump right into the action. We're at Capital Casino playing in the 1-3 game. So sit back, relax, enjoy. Here it comes. We're in the big blind with Ace-5 offsuit and get a free look at a flop of Ace-5-6. We check. Player bets $6. It's a small pot. Comes around to me, I put in the call, looking for a blank on the turn to put in a check raise. And turn is the king of clubs. Perfect card. I check, he bets out $10, and now I'm gonna put in a raise. I make it 40. He seems to like that amount, so he puts in an additional $30. And I'm thinking, just put up another blank and they put up a king of hearts. So I get counterfeited first hand of the day. I check it, he checks it back. I show my ace five and he takes it down with ace nine. The very next hand I look down at two aces in the small blind. The person opens for 10 in the cutoff. I raise to 25 and he puts in the call. So we're heads up to a flop of ace six four with two hearts. I lead for 15. And here he puts in a raise to 45. I think he's just taking a stab at it. Either that or he has some sort of flush draw. I have the ace of hearts, so I'm not too worried about him having a pair in a flush draw. So I really think he's just taking a stab and I imagine he will give up if I call. So in case he has a flush, I'm just gonna put in a raise and get some value out of a flush draw. He only has about another 150 back. I either expect him to go all in or to fold. There's really no, not much middle ground on this hand. And as soon as I put the chips in, he just releases his hand and we're on to the next one. There's a $7 straddle on this hand. I look down at nine, 10 of hearts in the small blind. We get a bunch of limpers and I decide to put in the raise, trying to steal this pot. I figure if I get caught, I have a hand that has a lot of playability. It's folded around to the cutoff, who looks at his cards for a while and decides that uh, he wants to play for the extra money. So he ends up putting in the call. I have some history with this player. He does like to uh, limp in with some strong hands on occasion and doesn't always play them the way you think they should. So when he puts in the call, I do have concerns that he has a big hand and that I'm hoping the flop really hits me because if I hit this thing and he does have a big hand, I'm gonna get all his chips. Well, the flop is not exactly what I had in mind. It misses my hand completely, but really hits my range fairly hard. I'm likely to have ace-king, king-queen type of hands along with aces and kings here. This flop is also difficult for my opponent to hit. If he doesn't have an eight or a king, he's gonna have a real tough time calling this bet. I really wish I would have sized up a little bit higher, make this bet a little bit tougher to call. I made it 45 and I don't think it's quite big enough and he just calls. So at this point I'm worried that he has a king and I'm really waving the white flag here when I check. I expect him to bet it and I'm just gonna fold he thinks for some time before checking it back. And when he does check it back, in my mind, I'm thinking he's more geared towards middle pocket pairs, say queens, jacks, tens, or nines. And he's just getting that free card. And I was gonna surrender again, but the ace of diamonds comes on the river. I really don't put him on an ace. I don't think he would call with ace king, I mean ace queen or ace jack. And I can definitely represent those hands now. So I lead for $100. He thinks for a long time. He's in the tank for probably close to two minutes or so. And the sizing I used was that of a value bet. If I had a hand like ace queen, I think I should have really polarized my bet a little bit more, maybe going 150 to 200 to really put pressure on a middling pocket pair. Because I think that's what he has and he ends up making the call after being in the tank for a long time. I show him my 910 and he shows me two queens. Good call on his part. 
So there's another straddle on this hand and the player raises to 20 from the hijack. I'm in the cutoff with ace queen of clubs. I make it 75 trying to get a heads up with this player. And I do, he, uh, we're heads up and he jams on me for all his chips. He has me covered. So it's about 250 for me to call. And I had a good look at this guy and he seems very confident. So the hand range I have them on are queens plus, most likely since my hand's ace queen that he has two kings. And I'm doing the math on whether it's worth calling with ace queen against two kings in this spot. It turns out in my rough estimate that I have uh, about $200 worth of equity if I call my 250. So I lay it down and he was kind enough to show me two aces. We ended up buying some more chips and switching tables. We looked down at 9-10 suited from the low jack. We raise to 20 and we get one caller from the under the gun player who limped in. So we're going to go heads up to the flop with 44 in the pot. And the flop comes 10-4-9. So really good flop for our hand. He checks it to us. We bet about half pot, $20, and he doesn't think too long before putting in the call. Turn card is a blank five of hearts. We decide to size up at this point. Really want to punish some sort of straight draw. Might have something like queen jack. So I make it 65. And he thinks again, and it doesn't take him that long to put in the call. But it looked like he was doing a little added math in his head when he's doing this. Usually that indicates a player who picked up some added equity, like a flush draw. And the river card comes as a four of hearts, and he just jams on me. It's about 185 and into a $210 pot. And I just really don't like this. This is the second time he made a big river bet against me. The other time I laid it down when I had top pair, top kicker. Now I'm faced with another tough spot. I'm thinking that maybe he had a 10 of hearts with a, another heart kicker, or maybe he has queen jack with a queen jack of hearts. The tell on the turn I picked up that he was doing some additional calculating makes me feel like he has the flush. And I hate laying down top two against a player and I don't want to be in the habit of overfolding, but I really think I'm beat here. So I just let it go and move on to the next one. We're playing six handed this hand. One player limps, next player raises to 15. I decided to flat with two jacks to be a little deceptive and the two blinds end up calling. So we're gonna go four ways to a flop with 63 in. And the flop is very favorable. Jack, seven, six, rainbow. It's checked to the initial raiser. He leads for 40. I'm really hoping he has an over pair. I put in the call. It's a little risky with the two players behind us. They could have some sort of straight draw, but they both end up folding out fairly quickly. And we're heads up for the turn with 143 in the pot. Turn cards are three of clubs, complete blank unless he has some sort of 5-4 hand. So in my mind, that's a very safe card. And when he checks, I figure I have by far the best of it. And he's probably drawing pretty close to dead. I decided to bet half pot. I'm thinking, you know, after I did it, I can probably get away with, with betting like one third pot. If I bet $50, he might put in some sort of crying call. But he's a solid regular. He's not going to pay me off. And if he doesn't have some sort of equity or some sort of redraw, he's going to just get away from his hand. And that's what he does. And I just take down this small pot with 143 in it and uh, move on to the next one. The straddle is on again. I'm under the gun after the straddler in middle position and raised to 25. I get a call from the person out back. He's a very knowledgeable and aggressive regular, usually plays in bigger games. And he has a very deep stack at this point, for about $1,400. 
I'm sure he's calling with a very wide range to play against me. Flop comes seven, six, deuce, one diamond. I check to him, see what he's going to do. And he decides to bet $35. And in my mind, I feel that this bet represents either some sort of draw, maybe a pair of sevens or sixes. But either way, my range for a check raise in this spot looks very strong. I'm not sure whether he will continue with a weak pair. He may continue with a hand like 8-9, thinking he might be able to get some stacks in. He puts in the call and the turn card is basically the third best card I can see. It pairs the bottom with a deuce. Other than a king or a jack, I can't ask for a better card. I'm going to continue the story, bet 140. And he goes into the tank for a long time. I'm pretty sure he has some sort of hand. Uh, the way I played this, it definitely looks like I have a overpair in this situation. And we've played a lot of poker together and he hasn't really seen me make too many plays at him. I can only recall making one other play at him over the last couple months, and I don't think he know, knows about it. So I think I'm getting a lot of respect, and I think he is gonna end up laying this hand down. And I'm very relieved when he does because he's the type of player that I'm gonna have to fire three barrels, and he still might call me with a seven. Anyway, he lays it down, we take this pot, we get one through and uh, I'm sure he's watching. He is a vlog watcher and I'm going to hear about this next time we play together. We're in the small blind with two kings. The person in the cutoff opens for 30. And when it gets to us, we make it 110. This is the same player who I've been folding against on several occasions when he made big, big bets on the river. And I'm really hoping to get some... Uh, some of those chips back. He puts in the call and we go to see a flop heads up with 233 in it and it comes queen deuce six. I was concerned that he had queens in his range for flatting such a large bet and he ends up shoving all in and first thing in my mind is oh no not again I can't believe this guy is so lucky he's just holding cards over me. But there's no way I'm going to fold. So I put the money in and we see a run out and he shows ace king offsuit. So he was just trying to force me off of something and we end up taking this down. Shortly after that hand, I looked down at ace king offsuit, open for a raise to 20. I get uh, two callers, including my friend from the previous hand. So we're going to go three ways to a flop with 64 in. He just bought a bunch of new chips. Hopefully they're going to be coming my way. Flop comes ace, queen, four, rainbow. He checks it. I continue for $25. This is a really good flop for my hand. But since we're so deep, I really think I need to increase my C-bet size. So instead of 25, I think maybe 35 or 40 would probably be better. Um, looking back on it, it's one of those errors you make when you're not used to playing super deep. The other player ends up folding and my buddy across the way from me puts in the call for the 25. We see a turn card of a six of spades. He checks it to me. I decide to size up a little bit more. I go for two thirds pot, which is about $75. And uh, he thinks for a while and he does a similar tell as to the other hand where I had nine ten suited. He looks at his cards and he looks like he's doing some math. He's, you know, moving his fingers around. He starts counting out chips in, in like a little pile and bringing them back. It's like he's doing some additional math of counting out his, his outs. And when someone does this, to me, it usually means they picked up equity. The obvious thing is a flush draw. 
I'm thinking he might have something like king, queen of spades. I put him on a pair of queens when he called the flop. So king, queen of spades makes a lot of sense. So does a hand like uh, queen, jack of spades. So if a spade comes, I'm going to be very defensive. The river card comes as a king of clubs. So now if he has king, queen of spades, he made two pair. And this is where he piles up some chips and he sticks them in the middle again. Here I am facing another pot sized bet on the river against the same opponent. I made some very tough lay down to get him against him. And now I'm at the top of or near the top of my range with top two. Thinking that he was picked up equity with that six of spades. I'm worried that he has jack 10 of spades here. And I'm trying to weigh the fact that he has jack 10 against the fact that he might have king queen of spades. And the fact that he just shoved on me with ace king and might have been just pulling my leg all this time. So I make a loose call and he shows me the jack 10 of spades and I kind of kick myself for that one. There's a six dollar straddle and there's like five players calling and it comes back around to me in the small blind with two queens. I'm going to put in a raise and I'm going to put in a pretty big one. So I make it 41, so 35 more. The player in the big blind calls rather quickly and everybody else folds out. So we're going to go heads up to a flop with 105 in the pot. Me and the big blind. Flop is a good one. It's three, four, five with two clubs. Good flop for my hand. I'm thinking he has a hand sort of like ace king, you know, with 10 outs or possibly a smaller pair like jacks or tens. From the, just the speed of the way he called pre-flop, I'm leaning towards ace king. I'm hoping it's not ace king of clubs, of course. And he puts in a quick call. And we're going to end up going to a turn with 255 in the pot. And the turn is like the perfect card for my hand without actually hitting my hand. It's a four spades. So it pairs the board, doesn't put up any kind of flush, and I go ahead and I jam. If he has ace king of clubs or ace jack of clubs, he might be forced to call off. If he has a hand like jacks or tens, he might think I'm out of line and put in the call. And he asked for a count. I got about 280 in front of me and he thinks for quite some time. The longer he thinks, the more I like my hand. And I really don't know whether I want him to call or not in, in this spot. I'm thinking he, if he has ace king, he still has 10 outs against me. If he has ace king of clubs, he has a hell of a lot more than that. So I'm kind of hoping for a fold. And I'm also kind of hoping if he calls, I might get a little bit closer to even. So after a long time, he ends up putting in the call. And we uh, end up scooping this pot with our queens and he shows that he had jacks. It's a straddle pot. There's one limper in front of me and I look down at two red queens in the hijack. I raise to 30. The player directly behind me puts in the call for the 30 and the original limper also calls. He's my friend from the earlier hands who has most of my chips in his stack. This time I don't think he's going to get any because the flop comes queen, queen, jack. He checks it over to me and with this board locked up, I'm just going to check it back. Hopefully somebody will make something. Turn card is a six of hearts, puts a possible flush draw on board. I check it again and now the player behind me leads for $55. Just a couple hands earlier, he was in a similar situation and he led in a similar fashion when he had a flush draw. So I'm really hoping he has a flush draw and if he does, I'm going to flat and if he misses the flush draw, I think he'll take another stab at it and I can catch him bluffing. 
And if I'm lucky enough for him to hit it, I might be able to get a lot of his chips. So when it comes to me, I think for a little while, like I have a decision to make, and I end up putting in the call for the 55, and I'm just hoping that he hits his flush. Either that, or maybe you had pocket sixes and caught a six. That would be nice also. Anyway, we see the river card of a seven of hearts. I check it over to him, hoping that he will lead if he has his flush, or take a stab at it with something that uh, is not. He doesn't disappoint. He puts out a bet for $90 and he has about 400 behind. At this point, I'm trying to calculate what's the best route to go, whether I should just jam for a pot size jam or maybe raise like $150 to $200. I decided the story would be better if I flop quads and stack somebody than if I flop quads and got an extra $150 of value. So I went with the jam. I'm really hoping to get all his chips. If he has the nut flush or a big flush, he's gonna have a hard time laying it down. And he does go into the tank for quite some time. In his mind, he's probably thinking, what kind of hands would I jam with here? I mean, would I really do this with a bluff? Or would I be slow playing a monster? The longer he thinks about it, the more I wished I sized down just a little bit. I'm thinking maybe 150, 175 more, he wouldn't be able to get away. But I think for my sizing, he just might. And he ends up folding the nut flush. I do win the high hand bonus of $200. And to the dealer lock who dealt it to me, I got some money coming from you next time I see you. So for the people wondering about my road trip, I did go down to the California Grand Casino for two days and played there. It's a wonderful facility and it's the same ownership for over 30 years. I used to work at the California Grand 30 years ago when it was at the old location and the owner, Will, was a very generous person to work for and I really like him and I'm very happy for the su success of their family business. The California Grand Casino is a beautiful card room. The staff was wonderful. The games had a lot of action and there were a lot of people there playing. So overall, I really liked their casino, but it wasn't as vlogger friendly as I was led to believe from another vlogger. Uh, they didn't even let me take notes on the hands when I was on, at the table. I was able to get some table footage of the hands I played but I didn't feel that it would be responsible for me to publish them, knowing that their policy is not to have things filmed at their location. So, sorry guys, nothing about the action or the hands I played at California Grand. Thanks for watching guys, appreciate your support. If you haven't liked and subscribed already, please do so, it really helps out the channel. Hope to see you next time. Until then, run good at the tables.